So we are continuing with our decision problems. This, of course, right now you are doing this on a purely technical basis, and that is because of the urgency of having to do the project. Okay. So now we are talking about entry price. Okay. We have already discussed extensively market order, limit order, stop order. Now everybody understands these uh, different order types. Okay. So don't worry about this uh, numbering here. This numbering is not important. So when we are talking about the decision problems uh, for the ma management of a risk book, okay, which in this case we are talking about an investment fund, okay. Uh, when we are talking about the decision problems, this particular numbering is not so important. It's just the problems themselves are more important. As long as you remember what the problems are, okay. So uh, this is just common sense. Actually, if you sit and think about it, uh, it it's quite obvious. But so the numbering is not so important. It is just uh, there may be some numbering errors in the uh, in what you see in the notes but uh, the numbering is uh, we are talking still about how to enter what, what is the entry price well, the main question that we are talking about is the whether the entry price should be at a price uh, you know what should be the entry price relative to the current market price the current market price is obvious to everyone at any point of time okay and it's an objective reality so uh, so the question is when you're talking about entering uh, are you going to enter the current market price or at a price more favorable than the current market price so far we have discussed these two types of orders is that clear so far okay but we have not discussed we did mention this that if we enter via a stop order then you would be entering at a price less favorable than the current market price do you remember this? Yes. Okay, we had the discussion. So market order and limit order, everybody understands by now. Yes. Okay, that basic limit order, you, I hope you're you already using this in your trading. Yes. Market orders, limit orders. And we have also seen how to add bracket orders. Mm -hmm. That's a peculiar feature of, uh, but the concept is useful. Okay, that if you want to do uh, easy management of your positions, you add a bracket order. After, with your limit order, you can add a bracket order. We saw that on the TWS. Now, obviously every piece of software, TWS is one of the most sophisticated trading uh, pieces of trading software I've ever seen so the other software which you might be using may not have all these options but at least you should know the concept that's always the reason for using the best possible software just like I tell you to focus on the US economy because the US economy is the most developed economy in the world so by looking at the US economy you get to see how uh, what are the features of a developed economy because many things they have over there which we don't have over here so if you study only based on the Indian economy don't, you don't have a full range of possible you don't have understand the full range of possibilities right so that's not the correct way to study especially subjects like finance marketing you can study completely based on India because marketing is very context specific how you market to a rural Indian housewife is very different from how you market to a Swiss uh, you know middle-aged Swiss woman so it's very different so uh, marketing is a subject that can be studied purely based on India but not finance okay Are you following what I'm saying here okay so now we are going to get into this odd way of uh, so why would you enter into uh, a why would you buy so obviously the question is why would you bother to buy something at a less favorable price than the current market either you buy it at the current market or you buy it at the price more favorable than the current or not buy it, uh, transact why would you transact okay you understand transact is more general than buy okay so why would you transact when you're entering the position why would you transact at a price less favorable than the current market price okay so to understand this so and the way you would do it at least understand this initially that if you are going to enter your trade okay at a price less favorable than the current market price you would be using a stop order okay so let's understand the logic of a stop order so the market order and limit order we have already understood okay so the thing to understand quickly about the market order is that there is a guarantee of execution but there is no guarantee of the price at which execution occurs okay this is the basic logic of a market order you can read there's a hyperlink also in your notes also there's a hyperlink for interactive brokers it's a very useful website for uh, learning many things including order types you will see that there are like almost like 40 50 order types iceberg orders this that so when you're getting into algorithmic trading when you're trying to combine your knowledge of trading and order types okay and how markets function with along with your programming skills if you do a lot of the uh, the quant work that gets done in finance is uh, the programming of uh, order types and trading strategies basically what we call algorithmic trading okay in that you use many of these order types which you see on the interactive brokers page so if you want to learn more than what has been taught in the syllabus you can go there and learn about order types okay we are only teaching you the very basic order types 
okay all right so the main thing no guarantee of the price because you are just telling the market just sell it now or just buy it now i don't care what the price is okay just give me my position limit orders obviously you get a guarantee of execution sorry you don't get a guarantee of execution because as garvin pointed out when we looked at that example that you were placing a limit order to buy below the market but the possibility exists that the market may never come down to your limit order price it may just directly start rising okay so in which case therefore there is no guarantee of execution on a limit order but there is obviously a guarantee of the price at which the execution occurs because the instruction to the system is that i want to buy apple at say uh, 1500 dollars okay so if the price currently is at 1650 then it will wait until it comes to 15 1500 dollars otherwise it won't buy okay so it will guarantee the price but there is no guarantee of execution so now we come to stop order and the best way to understand a stop order is that a stop order i'll just write it in your notes a stop order is like you can think one way of thinking about the stop order i don't know if it's mentioned here okay a stop order is like a conditional market order i think it's a useful way of thinking about it because uh you already know what a market order is it's an instruction to the system okay uh, and try to think about when you're doing order types trying to understand try to think about it in terms of system logic okay you have some exposure to programming yes, okay sir. all the stuff that you do all the stuff that you've done on spreadsheet software your excel courses okay understand that excel is nothing but a any spreadsheet software is nothing but a programming environment instead of programming in c++ you are programming in uh, in that environment of the spreadsheet software okay understand it as a programming environment and all these formulas that you use in excel these are what we call subroutines you heard this pro uh, concept before in programming subroutines so a subroutine basically is so you have to think of excel formulas are like subroutines like if you have a formula for irr okay in spreadsheet you have a formula for irr what everybody is looking blank <laughs> you have yes. so these are just subroutines you have a formula for npv yes sir so it's a subroutine in programming is basically like a a, a sub set of a, a a predefined set of instructions okay which is already been programmed as a uh, as a as a set of instructions okay so and that set of instructions has been called irr so whenever you call that by writing that syntax irr this is all syntax okay you understand when you're doing this stuff on your spreadsheet okay when you're doing this stuff here you're actually using this as syntax okay so when at the moment i write irr uh, so spreadsheet knows what i'm writing here if i started writing int rr it would not understand because the syntax is wrong so you have to understand these terms because as modern students you have to be very very tech savvy so you have to have a good understanding of you may not be a, a top notch programmer but you have a good understanding of how programs work how software works so these terms you should understand like i found out you didn't know about the records and fields in a database okay so these kinds of basic concepts you must have okay so these are basically this is called syntax so the right syntax for getting internal rate of return results in a spreadsheet is irr you can't write int rr that's wrong syntax so the system will not understand it okay so but this is actually what is called a subroutine technically in a sub, in a programming context it's a subroutine because so spreadsheet software whether you are using excel here i'm not even using excel i'm using google sheets right okay so uh, the system already knows that when this person is using this syntax of irr it wants me to do a certain type set of calculations certain specific calculations which i will not do if i if the system if the user is asking me to do some if i write sum sum that means this thing is asking for different set of instructions irr is a particular well defined set of instructions right okay like get me a cup of coffee to a robot is a different set of instruction than go and photocopy this these five pages right are you following what i'm saying so you have everything as a syntax and the system wants you to talk in the language of the system which is called the syntax so if you use the right syntax then the system will respond okay so this is what we mean so all of these so understand uh, spreadsheet software is just nothing but a programming environment okay so you are writing programs in this particular environment you have to follow the syntax of this particular environment so what i'm talking about why did we get into this long now you learn some new things 
concepts like sy syntax the fact that spreadsheets are actually a programming environment okay just like you uh, instead of programming in C++ you're doing this uh, in a spreadsheet software so uh, so syntax you've learned okay you've learned the concept of subroutine also a subroutine is nothing all these Excel formulae are all subroutine again I should not be saying Excel I should be saying spreadsheet software but uh, it's Excel is a shorter word okay so uh, these are all basically subroutines so you should know this concept also which means it's a specific set of instructions make me a black coffee to the robot it's a specific set of instructions rather than make me a proper coffee with milk and sugar okay so when you say make me a black coffee the robot will execute that specific set of steps so similarly when you're calling for IRR it's a subroutine it will execute those specific set of steps only okay so that's why so it's subroutine because it's like a uh, you can just call it with a particular syntax okay and it will execute that routine so you put it in it is sub because normally it is put under it is nested under a lot of other instructions okay like do this uh, perform a project analysis so maybe the larger program is to perform the project evaluation under that one of the jobs is do the IRR okay so that's why it's called a subroutine you just put it into the larger set of instructions okay so you learn some new concepts today okay so the system logic to, to understand system logic how does the system think how does the computer understand the instructions so it's very important for you to be thinking along those lines because you have to get used to thinking like a uh, like you're talking to a computer this is clear so subroutine and some other stuff you learn okay um, syntax and some of the other terms that you learned okay so if we go back to this one itself um, I have written it in your yeah so I am calling the stop order a conditional market order because I am teaching you a new type of order which is uh, you already understand the market order so it's easier to understand it in relation to a market order a market order is an instruction to the system just sell or buy it right now I don't care what the price is okay but a conditional market order means it is not going to be transmitted until a certain condition is fulfilled is that is that clear okay that's what a conditional market order means so essentially that means once a certain condition is fulfilled the system will transmit a market order okay so that's what a stop order is so you notice that a stop order has we have talked about parameters yeah so we are saying that remember at the beginning we said something about uh, this part here that when we talk about parameters we are not talking about um, we are not talking about time and force amount destination okay destination is whether you want to send the order to the BSC or the NSC or the New York Stock Exchange or the Philadelphia Stock Exchange you can in, in advanced software types you can actually give that instruction also all right so those things we don't include in number of parameters this is not so important number of parameters but just to understand the concept that market order we say there are no parameters in a market order therefore there are no parameters because the as soon as you enter a market order okay whether it's a buy or a sell the system understands that what has what it has to do okay that's why we say in a market order there are no parameters and therefore in comparison in a limit order there is one parameter is that clear there's one parameter because the limit price because you're telling the system to buy it at a design as a designated price so that you have to tell the system the limit price okay so that's why you notice when you're entering orders on TWS uh, market order it doesn't ask you for anything okay because if you click on the bid it, you know it knows you want to sell if you clicked on the offer it knows you want to buy and then you enter a market order and it immediately transmits okay uh, with some you have to override some of those pop-ups okay but in a limit order it will ask you for the limit price what is that price at which you want to buy okay or sell okay so it's got one parameter okay so in a stop order basically also the parameter is one okay there's only one parameter in a stop order which is basically in this case you have to give the stop trigger level you're already familiar with this okay so I'm just re rehashing this once again uh, because you're already familiar that when you enter a stop order we have discussed all these extensive uh, cases of where we are looking at our TCS we took the example of TCS as a kind of a like a case study like a running case study and uh, yeah okay so we took that and we talked about all kinds of stops we talked about stops over here okay we talked about stops over uh, stops over here okay all these discussions that we had when we are talking about position sizing and all that okay all right so um, so therefore you're already familiar with stops so stops have only one uh, uh, stops have uh, uh, one uh, parameter because you need to enter the stop trigger level which was here which was here these are the stop trigger levels that we have to enter okay all right now the question is okay
Now we are going to talk about why would you enter a position with at a price why would you enter a price let at a, uh, why would you enter the position or a trade at a price less favorable than the current market price okay and the way you would do that is by using a stop order but the question is that it sounds kind of stupid okay why would you do that okay the reason you do that is there is a logic of something called a breakout trading system okay we can put this here actually that put this in here. In discussions for today, we are having a discussion on breakout trading systems. How to enter the, so the, the, the reason we get into this topic is this, why we are trying to understand why um, we would enter a position at a, uh, enter a trade at a price less favorable than the current market price. So the reason you do that is there's a category of systems called breakout trading systems. So the logic here, maybe first we just read it a little bit. So it becomes bullish when it, when a new high is made. Okay. And I'm only going to highlight this because the reverse obviously applies. Okay. And becomes bearish when a new low is made. So essentially what we are saying is go back to the, uh, try to understand the logic of a breakout system, which is that, um, let's look at this. Okay. Now suppose that uh, these highs, they're, they're in fact not the same. Okay. But suppose that these highs were all the same. So this actually is higher than this high. Okay. But for the sake of our argument, for the purpose, because you're never going to get exactly the same highs. Okay? Okay. So for the sake of our argument, we will assume that these highs are all the same. Let's say this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. We are going to just forcibly assume that all of these highs are same, are the same. Okay. So essentially, what the then you what you are looking at is if you if you make this a slightly longer uh, time frame. Okay. If we make it 240, we'll be able to see. All right. So you're looking at a, a long uptrend in TCS. Okay. So what we are saying is that these highs, this one, this one, this one, and the last two that you see there. Okay. These two. Okay. All are the same. All right. So now if you obviously the question that arises is that so you can already see the long uptrend. Okay. But this is the so far this is the highest high that has been made because all these other highs are all the same as this level okay so th so far we can say uh, mathematically this is the highest level that the market has reached okay and tested it many times but after this there has been no higher high because we are saying all the other highs are equal to the other high okay so one of the questions that you could have is that uh, uh, you may have noticed when you're looking at business television when the market is going up the most of the discussion is oh my god is it a top is the market going to drop now is it are we near a top okay so that the media likes to play that game okay uh, so the question is you might have that same question in your mind that uh, is the uptrend over maybe the uptrend is over because we haven't made a new high and we are repeatedly failing at the previous high okay we are repeatedly failing to cross because if you just hit equal to and then come back that means you're failing to cross okay so therefore that question might arise so then obviously what will happen is that once the market makes a new high above this high okay which is all these new highs once it breaks above this uh, uh, this particular high then it would have confirmed the con uh, continuation of the uptrend is that clear to everyone it would have confirmed the continuation of the uptrend so therefore basically for those who want to be a little more extra conservative okay uh, that uh, or those who want to take their views in this particular manner okay they would say that okay i would i don't really have a clear view right now because it's possible that the market it's a long uptrend the uptrend might have stopped over here okay but if the market actually makes a new high then that's a confirmation that the uptrend is continuing is that clear to everyone? Why is it a confirmation that the uptrend is continuing? New highs, high, you have to, higher highs and higher lows. You have to be more specific than that. Okay, so that is the right answer. That that means it is it continues the pattern of higher highs and higher lows. Okay, this is the this is the major low that you see after this high is formed, and this low was never exceeded. I think this is the actual low. Okay, and this low was never exceeded. Okay, on the downside. So therefore, the high the whatever low was formed over here, all these lows they are all higher than this low, and then you go uh, and break above this high and you make you you continue the pattern of higher highs and higher lows that's why at this point making a new high 
basically confirms the continuation of the uptrend so for that may be important for those who are not so confident that the uptrend is going to continue okay uh, so so if uh, so is that clear to everyone that that's clear okay so therefore this is what the logic of a breakout trading system is a breakout trading system looks at this kind of a range okay so you can see this is the contracting range people would call this when you're looking at technical analysis patterns you can use this um, stock charts has a I don't know if there's a free login or something you can try that but these if you want to learn a little bit about technical analysis and chart patterns these guys are good because there's a lot of stuff on the internet which is not very good okay so I would suggest that if you want to learn about technical analysis and chart patterns you learn from here okay so I'm putting this link into your um, session outline okay so I'm just putting it here okay um, it's kind of random out of uh, off topic but uh, you'll understand okay you just need to have the link all right okay so that's why uh, you can see so when you look at these patterns there are many technical patterns so technical analysis as i said is a vast subject you can actually have three courses on technical analysis alone okay like what we do here in terms of our three electives we can actually have them all on technical analysis and uh, so there's one of the categories of technical uh, patterns uh, technical uh, tools that we use is chart patterns so classical chart patterns so you might have heard of these terms called this would be called an ascending triangle okay so this would be called an ascending triangle where essentially it would be a continuation pattern and so therefore after this the market is likely to go up because you can see it's like kind of pressing up okay and then eventually it breaks out so the logic of a breakout trading system the guy, person who uses a breakout trading system the logic is they're waiting for confirmation okay they're waiting for confirmation as soon as it makes a new high that is a further confirmation of uh, pattern of higher highs higher lows continuing therefore the uptrend is still intact so now we can buy is this clear so that's why okay so now you can see obviously that so so therefore what is the guy if we zoom in a little bit more okay we can see it closely we can let's assume that this price is 2300 just for the sake of argument we want to use a round number okay so let's assume that this price of 2300 is where it's been failing repeatedly once twice third third time fourth time fifth time okay so now let's say the market drops a little bit more to about this level it's almost at the highs right now so obviously this looks also like it's going to break out okay but let's say it comes back a little bit to say about 2212 okay or 2218 or whatever whatever 2220 okay so now the market is at 2220 let's say okay so what the breakout trader is going to do is so what is the logic of the breakout trade what is the thinking of the breakout trader that at this point of time i don't have a view because i'm not sure whether the uptrend is over or not okay but if the market goes above 2300 then i have a view then i'm bullish are you following the logic of the breakout trader that he's he will become bullish at this point he has no view but he will become bullish if the market goes over 2300 okay which is the highest high so far is everyone clear about this logic okay so you are clear the logic okay so if that's so then if you become bullish above 2300 then what should you do in terms of your action buy or sell yes people are not getting confident answers here shreya is murmuring but she's not giving the right answer yeah she's not. what is the answer let's hear your answer is my question clear yes, if i am a breakout trader and i become bullish as far as my view is concerned i become bullish on tcs when the market clears 2300 okay goes above 2300 then what should be my action <coughs> buy is that clear obviously i'm not going to sell if i suddenly become bullish from because right now my view is neutral my view right now is neutral so i have no position so the other thing that you have to be clear about is you'll see that technical trading can be done in a very logical way and in a very precise way okay so it has to be very logical so if i don't have a view at this point of time then i shouldn't have a position is that clear i shouldn't have a position if i don't have a view but the moment i become bullish i should have a position and that should be a long position is everyone clear okay so so therefore at this point already the breakout trader knows when the market is at 2220 okay when the market is at 2220 the breakout trader already knows that if the market goes at above 2300 i will become bullish and therefore i will i will want to buy is that clear okay 
so if you want to buy when the market is at 2220 and you want to buy when the market rises above 2300 so which means our trigger is going to be 2301 let's say let's assume that the minimum increment is one rupee okay for the sake of argument in this case it'll be 2300.25 okay because we are trading in 25 so 2300.25 the moment we see the market trading at 2300.25 which means 2300 has been broken clear okay so that means now the breakout trader is bullish and so he wants to buy so 2300.25 is his trigger okay so but the market right now is at 2220 so he knows that if the market goes to 2300.25 he wants to buy but right now the market is at 2220 so that means he wants to buy at a price higher than the current market is that clear Sir, current why would he want to buy if the market is going up? Because he's a breakout trader right now, he doesn't have a view. That's why I explained the logic of the breakout trader earlier. Are you following the logic of the breakout trader? Okay, let's launch it once again. Let's understand that. So that means that the earlier step itself, we should have stopped. Okay, when I was explaining the logic of the breakout trader. Okay, now we can see the ascending triangle in great detail. Okay, all right. Are you following this so far that the market has been stopping here? We have been made, we made this uh, kind of crude assumption here that these highs are all the same. So it's stopping at 2300 repeatedly. It's failing there repeatedly. So this guy is not sure. He's a breakout trader. He's not really sure. Maybe at this point of time when the market and we assume further that the market has dropped to 2220. Okay. Okay, so the market has dropped to 2220. Actually, it's around 2247. But right now, we assume that the market has dropped to 2220, and uh, the highest high so far is 2300. So he's not sure right now whether this uptrend is over or not. Okay, but obviously, if the market, as Chuk has explained, as the market, if the market goes up above 2300, then it would have established, re-established the pattern of higher highs and higher lows. Okay. Uh, I mean that is most recently re-established it okay so therefore uh, that would have confirmed that the uptrend is still in progress is that clear so that means if the uptrend is still in progress this guy breakout trader basically wants to buy when the trend is up okay he wants to sell when the trend is down so that maybe that is confusing you because I didn't mention that part so uh, so maybe I should have mentioned that but we have to make, talk about something else uh, before we do that but anyway so the breakout traders idea is that he wants to buy when the trend is up and he wants to sell when the trend is down okay that is another lo logic we are going to come up with terms for this okay but so, so but it's a good question because I, is that the one that confused is that the part that confused you okay so you didn't understand yeah so i should have given that logic further before explaining the breakout trading logic okay so the other philosophy of the breakout trader is that when he looks at a long-term uptrend if the trend is still up he wants to buy okay if the trend is still down he wants to sell he wants to go with the trend okay so he's a, basically he's a trend follower so uh, so what we should do here is we should talk about okay. all right okay so uh, so we we are going back to this uh, concept of let's just then maybe just pause here and go back to this concept of momentum versus mean reversion so i put these two uh, terms here okay trend following or momentum and contrarian or mean reversion okay so we use momentum versus mean reversion these are important terms that the market will use and these are very important concepts also because you can apply it even to uh, fundamental analysis uh, approaches okay so it's important to understand this these are just two names okay so it's just like saying that you know either you say momentum versus mean reversion which is like in english you're saying indians and japanese okay and then if you say it in hindi you would say bharatiya ya japani right so in that case you're saying trend following versus contrarian okay so these are the same things basically two different ways of saying it okay so momentum versus mean reversion is a more commonly used set of terms so let's understand what these two terms mean okay so essentially what this means is this is actually uh, important also you, you should do an experiment with yourself to try and understand uh, what um, let's try and see this all right okay so when you look at a long term when you look at a long term uh, chart typically you will see even on any short term chart you will see a trend okay uh, most of the time 
so uh, if you're not seeing a trend you just have to zoom out eventually you'll see a trend sometimes it may be consolidating in the short run but so there's a trend here okay so what the momentum guy, uh, uh, trader does okay so me we have more momentum type of traders and we have mean reversion type of traders okay these are this is like vegetarians and non vegetarians okay so typically a vegetarian obviously will not eat non veg okay so th this is a this is a st the, uh, this is kind of like a slant or a philosophy or something like that okay so once you find that you are actually a trader who believes in mean reversion you will find that whether whatever market you are trading whether it's a currency market or the commodity market or equities or debt okay whatever you trade you will have a mean reversion approach and typically everybody is uh, aligned one way or the other it's like some people bat those who bat left handed will when they are playing tennis will also probably be playing tennis left handed okay so uh, that is the point i'm trying to establish here okay so either you'll be a momentum trader or you'll be a mean reversion trader it's very unlikely that you will switch your philosophies between uh, by when you are changing between markets okay so let's understand what these mean so a momentum trader essentially is going with the trend that's why the other meaning of the other name of momentum is trend following okay trend following you understand you're following the trend okay so therefore the trend for the momentum trader basically tries to go with the trend so he might there may, there may be two types of momentum traders okay which is either you are uh, somebody who looks at any given trend here you can see clearly on this particular view uh, it's clearly the trend is up okay so in this case the momentum trader would just assume that the trend is up and it would immediately go long straight away okay so if you're looking at these very large swings in the price if that's your zoom level that you're applying okay every zoom level is like a different system okay it's like a different trading system you have to think of every zoom level as a different trading system so if this is the kind of longer term trading system you're using that you're looking at this high and then the this low high low high low and then this seems to be going very close to this high so the momentum trader in this case who is following this degree of system will straight away go along at market because we are again we are assuming that um, in this case uh, we are not uh, we are back to that system of where to simplify matters we are going to always assume that we enter at market okay and of course we'll change that when we come to the breakout trader but so the, the so one type of momentum trader will be per, a person who automatically assumes by looking at the trend that the current trend is still in progress he assumes that the trend is not over okay so you can have essentially so i'll write this once again in your um, notes okay so momentum traders may either assume that Is still in progress so let's understand this category and this is there's a very uh, important saying in the markets actually uh, which you should be aware of this is called the trend will this is very popular among trend following traders the trend will continue until it ends it's kind of um, tautological obviously that the trend will continue I will live until I die so it is kind of total it's like that but the the point is try to emphasize here is that uh, until you see the, the the message of this particular maxim is it's an important message actually for if you want to be a momentum trader is that in the, on this chart do you see any rever any sign of a trend reversal do you see any sign there's no sign if you are following these big trends okay uh, if i force you to follow only these big swings here one high here then low high low and then another high here low here and then going very close to that high so if i force you to follow only at this level of the zoom okay then do you see any reversal is there any sign of a trend reversal the bullish trend is still in place right because you have a pattern of higher highs you have this high now you have a next high which is higher okay then you had this low the next low is lower but typically ideally here at this point to establish this as a low we have to go above this high okay but you can see even this low is higher than even this low 
Okay, even this was not broken. And obviously, it's higher than these other lows from where this is coming. So it's a long uptrend, no sign of reversal. Can you see that? So basically, that's what the message of that particular maxim is. Very important maxim, which you should remember if you want to be a momentum trader, is that the trend will continue until it ends, which means that until un if you have not seen, if you can't see any sign of a trend reversal, then you assume that the trend is going to continue. Okay, that the trend is still in progress and it will continue because you have not seen any sign. So the trend will continue until it ends. So you wait for the market to give you a sign of the ending of the trend by breaking below, uh, in this case of an uptrend, by breaking below a previous higher low, breaking uh, below the highest low so far. In this case, the highest low so far is very close to being uh, to breaking out here. So you can just assume that this is the highest low, right? So at this point, if it breaks below this, only then you know that there is a reversal. Otherwise, there is no reversal. So what these guys do is that this category of momentum trader will basically just assume that the uptrend is in place and straight away they'll want to buy it. Okay. And in this case, we want to just simplify this as an entry price assumption and we assume that they are going to buy at market and then the stock and on this degree of system, the stock will be here. If you're using a shorter degree of system, a smaller, de uh, a much smaller system, you can see that this high, what is the high here? What is the high here, guys? 2281. Can you read it? What? I'm positioning the cursor on the high. I am positioning it deliberately here. Why should I go above? You have to read the, the stuff on top. Don't follow this stuff on the right. You read the stuff on the top. That's how you read the values from a chart. Okay. Which is important if you're a technical trader because you're going to be setting your stops. Okay. So 2281, everyone is clear. This is also something to learn how to read the chart. Okay. Now this is higher, I think, based on my assessment. Is that correct? Is that correct? So visually, because I'm so used to looking at charts, just by looking at it, I can see that it is higher. Okay, because uh, my eye has got used to it. So it is just one uh, rupee higher, 2282. Okay, so it is already higher. So now, what can I do if I'm a shorter term trader? Remember, this is the other stop. If I'm a long term trader, if for the long term system, this will be the stop. Or let's say this is the actual low. This is the stop. Okay. But if I want to use, but that's very far away from this current level of 2252, okay, and this one around 1776, it's a very long distance, which means my position size will have to be much smaller, okay. But I can use another tighter stop because this is higher than this. Can you see that? We already showed you that this is higher than this by one rupee. That's good enough for me. Minimum tick size, one tick is higher, good enough for me. So I can use this, this stop also. Because actually on the shorter term patterns, I have a low, high, low, higher, high. So I have a low, I have a higher low. I have a high and I have a higher high. I've got my uptrend, clear? Okay, so I can immediately buy at the current market and where will my stop be here? Because the trend will continue until it ends. And if it goes below this at this point of time, it would have ended the trend because the pattern of higher lows would have been broken. Is everyone clear? You're following? Okay. So, uh, so therefore the other option is for me to, for a short term system, I can just put the stop here. Then you can see it's a much tighter stop. So I can afford to use a much, I can take a much bigger position because the stop is much tighter. Okay. With the same risk limits. Okay. So, uh, so the first thing we are learning is that basically a momentum trader will straight away go long because he doesn't see any reversal of the trend. So he assumes that the trend is still in progress and therefore he straight away goes long under these simplifying assumptions he could have also used a limit order but we are going to just do away with that uh, complication for now we'll assume he goes long at market and he places a stop either short term system over there or long term system over here and that's it decision is taken clear okay you see how simple it is okay technical analysis okay uh, now the other category of momentum trader is essentially the breakout uh, systems trader okay which is if we go into your notes okay so either assume that the current trend is still in progress the trend will continue and reach the first category okay or b what we call um, uh, So we call these people who use breakout trading systems, we call them breakout traders. Okay. Okay. 
in which case they need a confirmation Is this part clear? This is already in your notes anyway, right? That the second category of momentum trader is a breakout trader because they also want to go with the trend, but they just want to assume a, that the uh, the trend is uh, essentially a uh, that the trend is uh, they they want to look for a confirmation of the trend by making a new high. Okay, is this clear? Okay. Now, uh, so that's why now is it better, uh, more clear to you that if we say that breakout traders want to go with the trend, okay? So therefore, they want to buy when the new, there's a new high, okay? So we were coming back to the idea of using the stop to enter the position, okay? Which is that if we go back here, we're going to use a stop to enter the position. So right now, even if we take the current market, if the current market is 2250, okay? And the we are saying that if the market goes above 2300, then we want to buy okay so if that is the case in that case then you are you want to buy you want to place a buy order at a level which is higher than the current market is that part clear yes right if you're a breakout trader you want to place a buy order at a level higher than the current market we have shown you the current market is 2250 right and the the trigger level for you is 2300 so above 2300 you want to place a buy order is this clear? Are you following? Yes. So therefore that order must be a stop order. Because remember what is the property of a stop order? A stop order always transacts at a price. Yes. The stop order is kind of like opposite of a limit order. Yes. The limit order will transact at a price more favorable than the current market. Yes. We don't want to be using loaded language like buy sell. Yes. We want to use general language like yes. Yeah, so the stop order will always transact at a price less favorable than the current market. Is that clear? Okay, so limit order. Another way to remember the stop order, one is that it's a conditional market order. <coughs> and the other is it's kind of like opposite of a limit order. Okay, so always transact at a price less than the current, uh, less favorable than the current market. So in this case, you think think about you have to think about it visually. Okay, with a few of the concepts that a breakout trader essentially is going with the trend. Okay, whatever is the trend established. Okay, so uh, this by going and making a new high. So the bro broker breakout trader almost has. I mean, at this point, there's so he's neutral. That's why he's not buying anything or doing anything or selling anything right now. He has no view. Okay, so but when the market makes a new high, he sees that the previous pattern was also of higher highs and higher lows. So he's saying that the market is confirming the continuation of an uptrend. So therefore, I want to buy because I'm a momentum trader. So I want to go with the trend because the trend seems to be up still. Are you following? Chuga is not convinced. Are you convinced? Don't worry about it. Stupid. You can think it's stupid, which means probably a mean reversion trader, which will come to now. Okay. But uh, so so that's okay. Don't worry. But first, you try to understand the concept. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, uh, so is this clear to everybody so far? So that's why now you understand why somebody would use a stop order to enter a position because the stop order would take him into the position at a price less favorable than the current market. Because at the current market price, yes. So obviously, the logical way for if you tell a computer, the computer will say, "Why not just buy at the current market then?" If you want to buy at a higher price, higher than the current market, but at the current market, the trader does not have a view. Are you following? Yes. Because the breakout trader is waiting for confirmation, so he doesn't have a view at the current market. That's why he has no position at the current. He can't buy at the current market because unless you have a view, you can't buy or sell, right? Are you following the logic? Okay. All right. So that's why. So now you see the first example of why somebody would use what we are showing you here that you buy at a price uh, worse than the current market. This logic, right? Coming back to this logic, right? That now you understand why um, this would happen that somebody would enter a position at a price less favorable than the current market. Okay. Uh, by using a stop order because they are essentially a breakout trader they are looking for confirmation of the trend before they enter a position so they are not sure about the view at this point okay garvit has also gone out right Sorry. both of you are 
what you don't know but you can see garvid is not here so where is garvid call him bring him back okay okay so um so are you following this now why did we write this yes, that you enter positions you can also enter positions that are priced less favorable than the current market now you understand this counter intuitive logic uh, concept right so uh, so that's what the momentum uh, so the that's what the breakout trading system does and so the breakout trading system if you want to apply it in a in a pure in a pure way you would apply it actually all right so essentially what it would do it would typically is better to apply it on a longer term system okay uh, because the short term there's a lot of noise but essentially what a breakout trader is that if there is a new uh, after going to a new high above 2300 let's say then if the market goes uh, build to a new low if the market makes a new lower low okay when there's a new low okay let's try and understand this one system which we have here which is the donkian trading system okay So now we are going to understand. You have a link to the Donkian system, which you will. see here this is called the this is the name of a guy called richard donkin you can read it here what the system is it's a four week trading rule which is a very this is a historical system so we are just trying to understand it but four weeks is just a general uh four weeks is just a specific value that has been set but in general you can think of it as a new high or a new low okay that's why i have said written that a breakout trading system essentially okay becomes bullish when a new n period high why have i used n period because here n has been replaced by in the donkian system n has been replaced by 4 i mean n is equal to 4 in the donkian system and period is equal to week okay that means your granularity is weekly you understand you are recapping some of those concepts granularity when you go to the chart and you want to go for your this is right now the granularity is 4 hours but if i want i can go for one week okay so that will change the granularity to one week okay and then the doc if you want to understand the donkian system we can write it here there's not that much data oh we still have that lot of data here even on but let's try to understand donkian here okay so are you following uh, so you should follow both you should understand the general the general language that i have used and then the i've uh, taken the donkian system as a ex- specific example because it's a very famous system it's the most famous breakout system in uh, in technical analysis okay so uh, it was used in the commodity markets but you can pretty much apply it everywhere okay so but understand this uh, you should be able to understand you should be able to uh, transition easily between the uh, general and the particular okay so that's why you notice my definition of a breakout system is is a system which becomes bullish when a new n period high is made and it becomes bearish when a new n period low is made okay now this is a general statement of the thing and then the donkian system is a specific case of a breakout system so here n is equal to 4 and period is equal to week period could have also been 4 hours could have been 1 hour could have been 5 minutes there's nothing stopping you from making it a 5 minute uh, period okay and n can be set to 20 or uh, you want to set it to 12 that means every hour you have a if you're looking for a breakout for a new hourly high so it can be so you should understand the possibilities okay that it's given as a n period so n in the case of the donkian system n is equal to 4 and period is equal to week so period will refer to the uh, granularity of the chart are you following okay so in this case we are specifically to illustrate the donkian system we are looking at tcs on a weekly basis all right so we can see now essentially that uh, you can take this as the current week okay or you can take uh, you know the previous uh, four weeks okay so this is the it's better to take the previous four weeks so in this case what we see is uh, that here's your pre- last week week before before that and before that so what is the highest high so far 
in the last four weeks over here 2181 2281 okay and as we saw it's already broken 2282 so the week the high of the last four weeks is broken so even under the donkian rule you can see that technically you have a buy signal this is what we call a buy signal okay you have to think in terms of technical trading systems logic okay so it's a very vast field so you better make and this is a very useful field you can actually up as i showed you with good risk management it's a very objective very simple kind of approach okay you can comfortably thrive in the markets uh, uh with this kind of an approach okay no the market if your risk management is solid the market can never do anything to you okay so it's a completely legitimate approach so uh, it's a useful thing to try and understand and master all these concepts so the entire thing then eventually it will go into algorithmic trading where you can bring in your programming knowledge once you understand the theory of technical analysis properly understand what you're trying to do that programming is just a weaning out it's just a way of automating what you want to do okay it's just like instead of every day i have to make coffee i write a program and create a robot to make my coffee okay so i don't have to do it anymore because they're making coffee then you really you don't you don't have a new recipe every day so it is it's a same old thing right so i just write a program and a robot does that for me that's all that algorithmic trading is so you decide that certain things can rep, uh, repetitive tasks that are much better done by a computer you just program it okay so all that goes into algorithmic trading but you there's, there's a vast body of theory and technical analysis which you can learn some of which you can learn from that chart school link i gave you so and this is one example of that so the donkian trading system is one example of that and you can see here you have a buy signal in tcs you can see directly how it will work okay so here you would go along straight away at the market as soon as it goes to a new high 2282 the moment it goes to 2281.25 in this case of tcs you would have gone long under the donkian system okay because every week your system starts out by monitoring the high and low of the last four weeks okay so here automatically you can see that uh, it has gone long at 2281.25 okay and where will the stop be the stop will be at the remember what the logic says bearish when a new end period low is made in this case n equal to 4 period is one week four week low yes sir. we need to have a four week low before i become bearish so what is the four week low 1 2 3 here four week low is here yes or no four week low is here visually one of the left is low no but that's not four week no that's five weeks i am in this week right now so i don't count the current week that is the better way to do it i look at the last four completed weeks so right now my boundaries were actually 2281 and one previous week week before week before that and the week before that last four weeks only you are right that from a plain high low high low perspective there are lower lows before that okay but we are using the donkian system right now so we are locked into the donkian system which tells us to only look at four week highs and lows are you following why i am not going beyond that only four weeks four weeks high and lows okay so um 1 2 3 4 so the four week low is over here okay so right now i have gone long at 2281.25 and my stop is at this level 2103.30 me stop will be 2103.25 uh point how did it get 30 maybe it's 5 paisa so it's not 25 paisa it's 5 paisa so 2103.25 will be my stop trigger level are you following is everyone following this i hope you follow everybody is following the logic here yes yes stop will be 2103.25 clear okay so this is my now obviously now suppose the market actually shoots up and breaks above 2300 and keeps on going for 5 6 7 8 weeks then when i'm 9 weeks away from today in the future okay then obviously this is not my stop i will have to recalibrate that stop by doing this exercise once again so it's a running process okay so once it goes forward you have to always look back four weeks and find out what is your high and low that you have is this clear is everyone following so far okay yes barul clear logic is clear you have to keep on moving it because it's any time the four week high and low 
at any point of time. The previous four weeks high and low. All right. So you don't get stuck over here as the market moves and time elapses. You have to keep moving forward. Okay. So you can see how simple it is. Okay. Now let's look at the other aspect. Okay. Uh, before we go to that, let me just quickly do this other part, which is the mean reversion part. Okay. Which is mean reversion essentially. What have I written here for momentum traders? In meter. Okay, so we'll just define mean reversion here. This is also still in your notes. Okay. Mean reversion traders, okay. What will they do? So has ended is a little bit stronger, okay. Uh, so let me put that in bracket. Bracket will reverse is a slightly weaker kind of view, okay. But essentially, what a mean reversion trader does is probably we'll find that Chug is a mean reversion trader. So he will look at this kind of a chart and he will say, "Oh, it's gone up a lot." And a lot of people do that actually. I think may, it's possible that the majority of traders are mean reversion. I haven't done a survey. It's a useful thing to do, maybe for your, for some of your research projects. Okay, find out how many of your colleagues you have to do it in a rigorous way. So essentially what a mean reversion trader does is the opposite of a momentum trader. The first category of momentum trader is a purer form of the momentum trader that he doesn't even need a confirmation. Okay, he just assumes that the uh, current trend is uh, because I don't see any sign of a reversal. Since I'm not seeing any sign of a reversal, therefore I assume that the trend is still, still continuing because the trend will continue until it ends and it has not ended. I don't see any sign of it ending, of having ended, right? So therefore trend will continue until it ends, so it will continue. I just assume it's continuing and I buy straight away, okay? Uh, but the mean reversion trader is the opposite. He looks at any long-term trend and he, or even a short-term trend, he always assumes that the current trend will reverse. So that's why I'm writing your uh, definition that current trend will reverse okay slightly weaker statement than saying has ended okay so if you are a very uh, strong mean reversion trader then you let's say you can think of it as you have a strong view the main point about a mean reversion trader is that they suspect the current trend they are skeptical about the current trend unlike the momentum trader who is very happy to jump onto the current trend he just assumes that the current trend is going to continue the mean reversion trader is the opposite he looks at it and says oh my god it's gone up so much I think it's going to reverse now okay which you would have been very I think you're very familiar with this kind of thinking maybe you have seen many people who have this kind of approach yes. okay so uh, therefore um, therefore that's the idea behind mean reversion okay why is it mean why is it called mean reversion understand this okay that if you look at this chart what do you think is the mean price here just take arithmetic mean what do you think is the mean price over here Roughly somewhere, probably around here, something like that. Yes. Say it's around 1107 or something like that. Okay. So now think about this. If this trend reverses in a big way, okay, then is it going to come closer to 2250 or is it going to come closer to 1107? 1107. It will tend to come closer to 1107 if it reverses in a big way, this trend, right? Okay, so now you understand you understand mean. So we already identified the mean on this chart. Okay, so the mean is around here, let's say. And you understand the word reversion? Reversion, somebody calls you, says, I will revert later. Okay, that means I will get back to you later. So reversion has the idea of going back. Okay, so uh, therefore the reversion is, if we say mean reversion means, actually what it means is, uh, actually what it, we intend to say there is, reversion to the mean. What we really want to say is reversion to the mean, but we use the short form and say mean reversion. Okay. What we really mean is reversion to the mean. So a mean reversion trader 
is always mentally projecting a reversion to the mean and so obviously you can look at the definition another from another approach now which is to say that okay you have 1107 let's say is the mean actually and if you are going to have a reversion to the mean on this chart then that can only be achieved by reversing the current trend by neutralizing this current trend if you are going to have a reversion to the mean if the market has to come back to this 1207 okay all right then in that case obviously it has to break this current trend because you can see this high will this low will be broken okay so it will essentially it will substantially reverse this trend it will neutralize this uptrend okay so basically the mean reversion trader always thinks like this that he looks at the current trend and thinks that it's going to turn around okay it's going to reverse that's why we call it a mean reversion approach okay and the other name for that is a contrarian approach a contrarian is somebody who thinks differently from the majority okay and the market is taken as the uh, majority okay so the market is basically obviously the majority is pushing prices higher that's why the market is going up in this case is this clear okay so the contrarian is the other name for this so the opposites of trend following is contrarian okay which you'll find many people who are basically will look at this and say it's going to reverse now and the market is overvalued and this and that okay which by the way is not a correct way of using overvalued is not the correct uh, uh, statement which you will be when we study value versus price when people say have you heard this expression the market is overvalued have you heard this expression if you are listening to that means you are not listening to enough business television yeah you heard the expression market is overvalued in business television every day somebody will come up and say the market is overvalued yeah. market is overvalued okay actually what they mean is the market price is too high relative to my assessment of fair value because market is overvalued is not correct the market always prices the market does not value okay because the market price is objective okay so value is subjective and uh, what the guy who's saying TCS is overvalued at 2247, he probably thinks that the fair value of TCS is something like 1600. Okay, according to him. But fair value is a subjective concept. All this NPV stuff that you do, IRR, is all subjective because it's based on projections of cash flows, which are all basically up in the air. I mean, you will have one projection, she will have some other projection. Okay, and there's no way to prove that you are right and she's wrong until now 20 years have gone past in the future right is this clear okay so it's all subjective value is all subjective all that stock valuation all that stuff you've learned dividend current growth model and all that stuff it's all subjective the value of the stock that you get from that is all subjective okay it's fair value it's all subjective so when a person says the market is overvalued what he means is it's the market price is too high relative to my assessment of fair value Okay, but obviously the, nobody is going to think about all these things. They just keep saying the market is overvalued. Okay, all right. So anyway, so mean reversion, they expect it to turn around and come back. Okay, that's what mean reversion is. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, let's understand uh, the breakout trading system. So now mean reversion essentially, okay, is that it's just that there are many, many approaches. Most of the indicators that you see, if you're looking at technical analysis indicators, what I've shown you here, on the, on the chart school uh, system here you'll see chart patterns okay but there are many other technical analysis approaches like moving averages I mean, and moving averages are actually trend following but you'll see rsis oscillators most technical indicators are actually mean reversion uh, tools okay they're tools to support mean reversion strategies okay so very common but you should understand so you should understand momentum and mean reversion well enough to sh so that if I give you one particular strategy and ask you to show me uh, to tell me whether it's a mean reversion strategy or a momentum strategy you should be able to tell me whether it's a mean reversion or momentum strategy okay right so uh, <clears throat> all right so for, for instance briefly I'll just tell you I'll give you one example of mean reversion let's look at uh, General Electric which is a stock which is in great a great deal of trouble right now because of all the allegations about accounting how you guys have you guys heard of all that stuff you're not following business news that I can see very clearly you're not following business news General Electric is uh, one of the most famous companies in the world but it's been uh, it has been subjected to now allegations about accounting and proprieties okay so now General Electric is basically down okay let's assume that we don't see this let's say we only see this okay so I'm looking at a long downtrend essentially what a value uh, what a mean reversion trader will do essentially will say this has got to reverse it's fallen too much it's got to reverse okay so one most famous approach of mean re uh, mean reversion strategy 
one most famous have you heard of value investing Warren Buffett does value investing you guys are not reading enough you're not reading enough and you're not following the links I've given you because you uh, in by this time in your second year you should have heard all these terms okay uh, you're not listening to enough business television you're not reading enough I've given you links to the intelligent investor value investing you should have heard of Warren Buffett uses value investing in equities okay and there's another famous investor called Howard Marks who uses uh, value investing in debt normally when the market uses the word value investing they're always referring to equities but there's nothing really that confines it to equities you can do value investing in debt also which is what somebody like Howard Marks does Howard Marks has a web website called Oak Tree Oak Tree Capital you can go to that website and um, it's not Oak Tree Oak Tree Howard Marks go and read his memos okay Howard Marks memos read his search for his memos you'll see them a lot of good commentary on the markets as a finance student you have to do all these things which I'm telling you to do otherwise your education is not complete just studying the syllabus is not good enough because the material is so vast we don't have time to cover it in three courses you have to follow my instructions and do it on your own beyond your uh, curriculum okay so there's a link right there okay so value investing essentially uh, most invest uh, another term that you should have learned okay so value investing Warren Buffett you'll find this in your and that book I've given you intelligent investor uh, Buffett okay just go to YouTube and you can look for a lot of lectures on Buffett on value investing okay so the point of the value investing approach is okay that um, here so the guy will look at GE Buffett I don't know whether he's actually bullish or JE but I'm just giving you an, a contrived example so he'll look at GE and say uh, that my estimate based on my projection of the cash flows uh, for GE okay what will be the earnings of GE in the future periods just like using your stock valuation model typically a Gordon growth model or and whether you use dividends or earnings doesn't matter because eventually the last period earnings has to be given out as a dividend okay if you're closing the company so so it's either doesn't matter what you use I prefer to use earnings so he does the earnings projections and he finds that discounts it at the cost of equity finds that the fair value of the stock of GE is probably $28 okay so therefore he says that this is too low and I'm going to buy it here because the fair value is $28 and the market is much below the fair value so therefore this will eventually have the, one of the assumptions he's making is that the market will eventually have to return to fair value okay this is what a value invest so in a very short uh, in a very brief way you have already learned what value investing is that's what they do you already know these models from your FM1 and FM2 okay that's all they're using okay the problem there is the projection of the cash flow even Warren Buffett's projections could be wrong as we saw that in the case of Heinz he uh, miscalculated the value of Heinz there was a massive write down in Heinz okay he admitted also you can Google for Buffett and Heinz as well okay uh, you can YouTube uh, check on YouTube for Buffett and Heinz uh, he admits that uh, there's a mistake so basically what he'll do is he'll assume the fair value is $28 market is here so he'll buy it because eventually he's assuming that that's what all value investing assumes that the market will eventually return to fair value okay that is to my estimate of fair value to Buffett's estimate estimate of fair value okay whoever is the investor his estimate of fair value okay that the market will return there and so can you see that this is a mean reversion strategy because if the market is going to return to this in this kind of a situation if it's going to return to this is it going to be reverting to the mean or not yes sir. it has to be reverting to the mean the mean may be a little lower but it will go through the mean right so that's why value investing is a mean reversion strategy it's not a momentum strategy are you following so this is the first thing you have to learn that between uh, value investing and uh, and um, uh, so to to, uh, to understand momentum and mean reversion you can see that um, value so you should be able to understand it well enough to see when when you are presented with a particular strategy you should be able to understand that this is a momentum strategy or a mean reversion strategy so now you've learned a little bit about value investing also and you got to read a little bit more okay and then um, uh, you can see that it's a mean reversion strategy the donkian system is an example of the momentum strategy because it goes with the trend okay all right okay that is we are assuming that you are applying the donkian strategy without uh, you know basically at this point in the donkian strategy you would not be 
Uh, we have one more thing to cover about Donkin. It's 45. I'll just take five minutes of your time. No, no, no. I will have to take because we are running out of time now. One minute, one minute, one minute. You have this is your lunch time. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. But that's you have 45 minutes. I'll just take five minutes. One minute. Uh, one second. Okay. Are you following so far? One, one quick. Okay. Now you follow and you do this on your own later on. What decisions? This far is so far is clear. Momentum mean reversion. Donkian system you understood enter at four week high exit at four week low okay here we are going with a one-sided approach that is we are not exiting at the four week low and going short okay I'm giving you a sort of a, a non stop and reverse version of the Donkian system so what are the decision problems solved by the Donkian system we'll just do this quickly and we'll end it here Okay, it is in your notes, so you don't know. What are the decision problems? What are our decision problems? Market asset class and in, uh, market instrument asset class that is fine, that's solved by the investor. After that, we have the buy sell problem. So Aurora was asking me, why did you decide to buy or why, and instead of decide to, deciding to sell? Okay, so can you see that the Donkian also solves the buy sell problem? Yes, sir. If you don't have a view on the market, and you just go with the Donkian system. Can you see that the Donkian is also solving your buy sell problem yes, in the first sir. place? Yes. Sir. The most fundamental buy sell, uh, the the one of the most fundamental problems that people worry about. Yes. Is it clear? It is already solving your buy sell problem in the first place by telling you that four week high you buy, four week low you sell. Okay. So it is solving the buy sell problem. What is the other problem that it is solving? Entry price. Normally we scratch our heads on the entry price. So should I buy at market? Should I place a limit order? Should I try to buy at a little less, like more favorable than the market? Are you following? Yes, sir. It is also solving your entry price problem. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Because it is making you enter at a stop order with using a stop order. So it's solving your entry price problem also? Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else it is solving? Exit price. Good. Now, Garvey is the only thing of exit. Exit. How to exit? Okay. Exit price. Any other problem that is solving? Yeah, pretty much it. Basically, it solves all, takes care of all your problems because essentially you don't have the take profit problem. But as far as the problems that are solved are these three problems. It is solving these three problems for you. You still have to solve the other problems. Position sizing, amount, that is not solved by this. That comes from your risk management system. Is this clear? Okay. So I've taken only three minutes. Why you guys are crying so much? Sukriti has also joined uh, Garvit's team of monitoring the uh, class termination. Okay. So did you 